Okay, let's have a look at addition reactions and how we can predict what products are formed. So in the first reaction that I've got here, we've got a symmetrical um, alkene, we've got ethene, and we've got a symmetrical molecule that's going to react with it. So we've got chlorine bonded to chlorine. In this case, our chlorine or our two chlorine atoms will come in over the top of the double bond, break it down into a single bond, and we're left with a chlorine on each of the carbon atoms. So we get 1,2-dichloroethane. In this case, we've got a symmetrical molecule that's formed. Now we can have a second situation where we have an unsymmetrical hydrocarbon. In this case, we've got one propene reacting with our symmetrical molecule once again to give us 1,2-dichloropropane. Now in this case, our chlorine comes in over the top of the double bond once again, and it doesn't matter which chlorine out of these two goes to which carbon, the end product will be the same. However, what happens where we've got an unsymmetrical hydrocarbon reacting with an unsymmet unsymmetrical reagent? If we have a look, we can get one of two possibilities for this one. We've got our one propene once again, this time we're going to add hydrogen chloride to it. On the one hand, if the chlorine goes to carbon number one, we're going to form one chloropropane. And on the other hand, if the chlorine goes to carbon number two and the hydrogen to carbon number one, we're going to form two chloropropane. So how do we predict which of these two molecules is more likely to occur? Based on evidence, Markovnikov came up with a rule for predicting compounds where you have that third scenario. So it applies when we have our organic molecule, in other words our alkene or possibly our alkyne, and the reagent are both unsymmetrical. In this case, or when this case happens, we have a rule that sets up what our predicted um, product will be. So the more electronegative component of the reagent will bond to the carbon-carbon double bond or triple bond end with the least number of hydrogen atoms. So let's look at how we would apply that. We have our one propene molecule again with our hydrogen chloride and we form the product 2-chloropropane. How do we know that that's true? Well, let's have a look at applying this rule. So the more electro electronegative component, in this case, it's going to be the chloride or the chlorine atom. And it goes to the hydrogen or the carbon with the least number of hydrogens. So in this molecule here, we've got two hydrogens and one hydrogen. Our rule says the least number of hydrogens, which will be carbon number two. So that's why the chlorine goes to carbon number two and the hydrogen to carbon number one. So this normally occurs when, oh, sorry, the, the um, electronegative component is normally the non-H group unless we have hydroxy halogen reactions, in which case this will be the electronegative component and the hydroxide will be the positive component. But for all other reactions, the non-H component will go to the carbon with the least number of hydrogens. 